Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and this month I'm covering sequencing in Reactor. Last time I showed you how to make two types of sequencers, one that ran alongside the MIDI clock and another that could be triggered via an incoming MIDI note. And the second one was for use kind of in a synthesizer type setup where you want to trigger a new sequence to start as you press a new note. So today I want to show you how we can set that up inside of this very simple synth that I've created that consists of nothing more than a sawtooth flowing into a low pass filter. And what I'm going to do just as an example is use our sequence to modulate the pitch cutoff of the filter. But we'll set it up in a way such that you can use the same structure for any knob. So first let's make a few simple edits to the sequencer. I want to add a send module to the output, not to be confused with an IC send. And one of the differences between a send and an IC send is that a send can um, work with polyphonic signals and an IC send cannot. So once we have that added, I also want to um, set the entire structure to be polyphonic. And now we can have the sequencer running um, at a different point for each voice in the synthesizer. Next let's create a macro for our knob and our modulation code and then we'll be able to reuse this macro for each knob that we want to be able to modulate. So I'm going to cut the pitch cutoff knob and then paste it back in our new macro and we'll use a receive module to get data from our sequencer and it's tempting now just to add the um, pitch cutoff to the sequencer value but remember that the sequencer um, knobs going into the sequencer only range from 0 to 1 so they'd really be adding a pretty small value to the pitch cutoff which has a range between 20 and 120 so we want to find a way that we can scale up the incoming sequencer data so that it matches the pitch cutoff knob. So I'll create a macro for this and it's going to have a total of four inputs. So um, we want to have a minimum value, a range value, and a step size value as well as the value that we want to scale up. And how we'll implement this is we're going to take the input and multiply it by the range. And so the range is the maximum value, subtract the minimum value. And then we'll add the product to the minimum value. And we'll take the output of that and quantize it by the step size. And so this is if you want to have um, your sequencer only give discrete values, say you only want it to send out 1, 2, 3, or 4, and not, you know, 1.35 or something like that. You could give it a step size 1 and um, control the values of the outputs like that. So we can run the output of our scale macro to be added to our knob, our pitch cutoff knob. And we have to decide on values for the minimum value, the range, and the step size. So like I said, the pitch cutoff ranges from 20 to 120. So maybe we'll have the sequencer um, values range from, say, negative 30 to 30. And then those will um, offset from the original base pitch cutoff point. This setup will give us a problem, however. Um, if we think about when the modulator is turned off, um, the input to the scale macro is going to be zero, so it's going to output the lowest possible value, which is going to be um, negative 30. So when the modulator is off, this is going to be still affecting our pitch cutoff, which we don't want. So we can fix this in a kind of esoteric way using the connect tab of properties and an IC receive module in conjunction with our receive module. So let's add an IC receive to the structure view 
and once they've been connected to each other, the receive will tell the IC receive whether or not it's currently turned on to accept the modulators. So go over to the connect tab of properties and in the internal connections um, area, set the receive as a sender and the IC receive as a receiver. Now the output of the IC receive will be a zero whenever the modulator is turned off. So we can compare that to zero and use a selector scanner to set the total modulation to zero whenever the modulator is off. And when the modulator is on, we'll accept whatever value is being output from the scale macro. So that should fix that problem. And the last problem we're going to encounter is that now that we've added a value to our pitch cutoff, we might have gone above the maximum value or below the minimum. We have no idea. So we want to make a clipper that will sense if we've gone too high or too low. And if it has, just clip the value to the given minimum or maximum. So we want three inputs, one for the value to be clipped, one for the minimum, and one for the maximum. And we'll achieve this using a combination of separators, values, and a merge module. So the input's going to flow into a separator, and it's going to check if we've gone lower than the minimum value. If we have, then the low output of the separator is going to output the value, and we can use that event to trigger a value that's holding the minimum. All right, if we're above the minimum value, then the event is going to flow out to the top output, which we can route directly into another separator that checks whether or not we've gone over the maximum value. And if we have not gone over the maximum value, we can just go out. And if we have, we'll trigger the maximum value. Finally, we've got these three outputs. We want to merge them all together with a merge module. And that's our basic clipper. So this is actually a really useful structure, and so is the scale macro that we used earlier. Um, so I actually have them saved to my hard drive just because uh, I use these structures so much when I'm in primary mode. So we just need to set the minimum and the maximum to the min and max of the knob, and then we can send the output to the output of the macro. And I'm going to set the receive module to be visible, and I'm going to put it into a menu mode. And this is just so that it's possible for the end user to interact with it. And we'll connect the output of our macro back into the pitch cutoff of our filter. And I'll check real quick that it works. It's not going to sound amazing because, again, it's just a sawtooth and a low-pass filter. But it should prove that this works and that we can connect the sequencer to any knob that we want. And there you can hear the pitch cutoff flying all over the place. So this is one of the first things I do when I'm making a big project is it's really a kind of a pain to go through once you've um, made everything and have to replace all the knobs with a modulation system. So usually I like to build the modulators first and then um, you can build the knobs to be connected to them directly so that as you're building you're making all of your knobs modulatable as you go and it just is a way easier than having to go back and correct your work later. Once again this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I've got a few more videos on sequencers coming up later this month so stay tuned.